Okay, so welcome to this、uh, test prep study、uh, question. So, basically, what this is is this is like a com- compilation of what you should know and what could you could expect to show up on the certification exam. So there are a total of fifty questions. Okay,、um, you may get. One that's less than fifty, but aim for at least roughly fifty questions. Okay, and you're given a total of fifty minutes. Okay, so the test is very short. Okay, now、um, about one third of the questions are going to be navigation. So when you guys get your actual certification、uh, practice exams. There will be exams where it does help you test navigation, so it's going to be、um, point, click, and drag. Okay,、um, that's that section right there, and then the rest is going to be multiple choice. Now here is a combination of both navigation and you know possible、uh, multiple choice questions. So again, you have approximately、um, you have. Fifty minutes to complete, fifty、uh, questions, and the percentage rate to pass the exam is exactly seventy percent. So you have to definitely,、um, yes.、Um, and then with you, your counselors, it really depends、um, what which counselors that you come from.、Um, I know that、uh, one stop, you guys are guaranteed to retakes. Now here's the catch: once you take in the first exam, and let's say you do fail it, you have thirty days to reschedule the next one. Okay, so that gives you thirty minute thirty days to、um, go over through the book again, go over through the practice problems, and、uh, pretty much get tested right away. Okay. Now,、um, right now. The testing center is one hundred percent operating, so it's been it's been like that throughout the whole entire pandemic.、Um, so, with that being sa- said, said、uh, we have lifted a few、um, safety measures.、Um, we do require、uh, we do we do not require、um, face masks,、um, And we don't check your、uh, vaccination card, so you're able to schedule with them at any given time. Now there are requirements in order for you to be able to get your voucher. Okay, so what we placed on you guys is that when we send you guys out the practice exams, you're gonna get about thirty practice exams. So that includes the navigation questions,、um, and your it also includes the、uh, multiple choice. Now. That you have to at least score ninety percent twice on the certification practice exams. Now, of course,、um, uh, you can prove it to us because they you should sign up in with your certiport. So you will、um, be given the link with your vouch with your、um, with your access code. And when you type that in there, when you set up your Certiport account, then you're gonna have access to your practice exams, and you're gonna have access to your scores and records. It should be through your email, okay? And what that does is that whatever amount that you scored on, that's gonna be your proof that you're going to submit to the school. So to、uh, so then you're ready to go ahead and get your voucher, okay? So with that being said.、Um, When you do get that ninety percent twice, now I'm going to suggest you this: don't stop at just two. Keep going until you get a consistent ninety percent. Ninety percent. You have thirty tries, thirty tests to、um, to earn that ninety percent.、Um, the reason why I say this is because you might get lucky the first、uh, test, you get ninety percent. Second test, you might be getting a seventy, and then again, might get a ninety, and then a ninety, and you might get a seventy the next one. So,、um, we just want you to, you know, help to prep to prep you for the exam by adding this、um, little、um, kind of hoop barrier to, in order for you to to let us know that you are ready for the certification exam. So, 
once you um, prove to us that you successfully got the practice exam at least 95, 90% of the time twice, then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, contact the school. And what's going to happen is that the school is going to help you purchase your voucher for the actual certification exam. Once you get your voucher, you have one year to schedule for your certification exam. Now, depending on the number one thing is which counselor you belong to. Most cases, one stop, they kind of let you, they're kind of lenient in when you schedule, uh, but they're not going to let you schedule for a whole year. Um, same, uh, and then of course, if you're from workers' compensation, you might have to test within 30 days of completion of the course. So um, it really depends on who your counselor is, who your sponsor is. Now, with that being said, um, you know, as long as you talked with your counselor and you know what's going on, so if you do um, end up failing the first time, you have 30 extra days to um, retake the second one with so that's the time limit there now I've mentioned this before the successful passing rate for the very first time is 40% um, most cases it's because they've never seen the exam before they don't know what to expect they could be nervous it's 50 minutes for 50 questions so it's definitely um, kind of scary and um, some answers or some questions could be confusing, like we've witnessed yesterday. So, um, yes. So, um, out of those um, 50 questions, right, you can, you, you are okay to miss some of them. Now, um, like I've mentioned before, um, this exam is partially uh, navigation, so you will be point and clicking, um, and the rest will be, uh, two-thirds will be multiple choice. So, and usually the multiple choice section can go a lot more quicker. So if you're, if you know the answer, you can just click it and then you can go ahead and um, go to the next question. However, the navigation portion can take a lot longer because as I've mentioned before, right, the book only shows you two ways, but the certification test pre test itself can ask you up to all seven ways that you can enter in a transaction. So you want to make sure that you exhaust every single way. How it will work is that it will, you know, you will enter in your first answer. Let's say you do your navigation portion. You want to enter a bill. You click enter bill on the home page. It tells you try again. Then you go up to the menu bar under vendors and enter a bill, it may deny you again and say, oh, you go try it, try again. So there are exactly, you know, like I've mentioned before that I've showed you every way that you're able to go ahead and um, enter in a transaction. So that's something we could cover today. So um, with that being said, um, other than that, um, for this class, right? Thursday, we'll, we will not see each other uh, from here on out, except for um, the students that are going to go into the accounting program. So I will see you guys on Monday. However, um, anybody else that's completely done, you are done with, you were done. The last class that you'll see me is Wednesday. So tomorrow will be our last, last official day. Thursday's your exam. You have Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for the exam. Now be very patient. The um, certification test uh, practice exams um, can be given usually a week or a week, two weeks after the class has been completed. So please be patient for that. I, w I will be the one that will be emailing you. Um, so whatever email that you use for the Google Classroom will be your direct contact from me. Okay. So, um, yes. So. I'll send you the instructions on how to uh, create your account and how to um, redeem your vow your your access code. All right, everything's online now. Um, they switched it up. It used to be like you have had to download a program, but of course with the pandemic, they had to adjust and make it a little more feasible for um, online. So 
Yes. Now, I have heard that Certiport and Pearson View has been administrating um, online uh, testing. Now, I don't know if QuickBooks is one of them. I know that it's for like certain ones like Amazon, um, uh, Amazon and uh, I believe IT is able to do it online. But for now, I don't know that's an option for you. It could be an option for you, but there are rules and regulations on how you could be successful to do that. You do need a webcam and it has to be on you um, throughout the whole entire test. Okay, so you're, you may or may not have to be obligated to go to the actual campus. Um, but we are an official testing center. So you guys, when you guys call to get your voucher, you guys get to take the um, exam on our campus for free, no charge, because you are a student um, at PETA. If you go somewhere else, because it's a lot more convenient and a lot more uh, closer to your home, you may be subject to have to pay for, um, for the test itself, or not the test itself, but um, pay a certain, um, like an entrance fee or even a locker uh, you may, um, you know, you have to pay for a locker to secure all your stuff. Uh, you may even need to pay like, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know what it is, but I know that um, anybody who is it that doesn't go to our school that has to take their um, test, any certification test. So a lot of TSA, they have to, they have to pay, um, they have to pay a small fee to take the exam on our campus. Okay, you guys are free, but unless you choose an area um, that's nearby your home, then that's that's up to you. Okay, you do have to note that you are subject to those fees. If you are a PETA student, you guys can get those fees waivered. Okay. Um, other than that, um, yeah, let's get started with the... Um, Certification. Okay, so if you skip a question, it goes against you. Okay, so um, there the the formatting of the um, test itself. It's kind of um, it's you have two buttons. You have the skip button, and then you have the skip for now button. If you click the skip button, that means you can't go back to it, and you accept that answer as a miss. If you go skip for now, then you can go back to that certificate. You can go back to that question. Okay, so make sure that you know that. There's a few things that some students don't know um, that are on the that are actually on the certification um, uh, test itself, and they uh, you know end up missing because of that. Now, like I said, forty percent is the success for the first. Te for the first test, 80% for the second one, okay? Now, they recommend that this is what's going to happen. Um, reading the book is very important. As you can tell, a lot of the questions are kind of detailed, and they kind of ask you very, very specific questions. They could even ask you a, navigate, a navigation multiple choice question. So it could say, oh, how do you enter this and this, Okay. So you want to be very, it's very, very precise. And once again, all of these questions you can answer through your book because your book is meant to prep you for the certification exam. That's exactly what that book is for. So uh, make sure that you read it a couple of times before you take the exam, okay? Memorization, unfortunately, is part of the certification exam. So if you're not good at memorizing, find some kind of tech uh, technique to help you memorize, okay? Other than that, we can get started. Any questions? Yeah, for those practice tests, uh, we're just going to do it at home, right? We don't yeah. have to go to campus for it. Yes, I will send you the link, and you can do it online at home. Yes. All right. Yes, they made it, they made it more easier. Uh, before, um, you would have to download a program that's very heavy, and that would also crash a lot of other people's computers. Um, so they, so we recommend that you would come to campus to do the practice exams. But again, they made it more feasible due to the pandemic. So it's a lot more easier. It's You don't need to download an application. It's online itself. 
And for those practices, uh, do we have the same time, which is the 15 minutes? Correct. Okay. So it, it's, it's to test you exactly how you would see it on the uh, certification uh, exam itself. Now, let me tell you this. It's similar. It's not exact, okay? So that's why a lot of students kind of get thrown off of that part too. They think, okay, well, this is just a mock exam. It is not the exact exam, okay? Understand that. Just know that the, the navigation portion is similar, but it's not exact. The same instructions follow through, okay? Uh, but it's not exact. Okay? Okay, so I, I just need to talk to my counselor and see what's my, what my rules will be. Correct, correct. Yeah, I, I would definitely suggest it. Okay, especially because I believe, Elena, this is the end of your program. Yes, it is. Okay, so yes, yeah. so you're gonna have to speak with them and see what your uh what they allow you because uh like I said I mentioned before, um yeah. you may be te you may be tested like right afterwards, uh but once again you need to have the practice exams in order for you to go through our barrier to ensure that you'll be able to pass the exam. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. At least twice. Okay. okay. Our barrier is just saying at least twice. I tell you, I say keep going until you keep going. You have 30 practice exams. So if you could score at least 20 of them, 90%, then that will definitely ensure that you're ready. Now, you definitely, one thing that I noticed is that because the practice exams, right, some of them will give in two weeks after. I've seen it before, like, because, uh, um, Yes, the person who's uh, administrating all or purchasing all these things, she is pregnant with, she she has twins, twin babies. So uh, there's only so much that she can handle at once. So with that being said, um, the hardest part is for the students that are done with the program. And the hardest part too is the students that are continue on with the accounting program. They can't focus on this. So that's why with this, um, with this class, online class, I let you keep your videos. I let you t retake the class if you don't, if you're not um, like 100% confident in what you're doing, okay? And I'll talk about that on Wednesday because Wednesday, um, I can let you have the option to retake the course because I do have another opening in, uh, the, in the p.m. in the afternoon. So you guys are more than welcome to retake the course if you're not quite sure of it. Make sure you tell your counselor because if your counselor thinks you're done with the program and you tell them, no, I need to take a retake, I'm not confident, they'll extend your, you know, availability to take those you know, extend the, the the time that you could go ahead and take your certification exam okay yeah that was my next question yes yes okay. most cases if you say i'm not ready i need to retake the course i'm going to sign up for the next class which is in um five weeks from now okay so we have another uh quickbooks class in the afternoon for, um that's um from five weeks from now i'll give you the exact date on wednesday but if you are interested in that, I can definitely put you into that class. Um, but once again, that's five weeks from now. So you may you may want to make sure that you go on to this. But once again, the retake course is the same thing as if you were to sit there and rewatch all the videos. It's there's, you know, as much as like I would say anything less, it's like you you already have the course. And like I've mentioned before, when you're done with this when you're done with this actual class i'm going to allow you guys to have access to all the materials all the lecture videos so you can just go ahead and sit there and repeat yourself as much as you want and they're on youtube so again you could travel anywhere and be able to access those um videos at any given time so you're not obligated to have to wake up at eight o'clock you're not obligated to have to wait for the whole class to be here it's all on the Google um, Classroom on YouTube, it's available to you. And also, maybe you want maybe you want to go ahead and look at other um, resources that could also help you as well. Okay, 
So, um, yes, yeah, so I, once again, if you are interested in the retake, um, I'll let you more details tomorrow. But once again, all the videos that you have, I'm going to allow you to keep, to have access to them for the next six months, okay? So those videos are yours. They're, they're this class. So if you're willing to retake the class, it's the same thing if you were just to watch all the videos. The only thing is that you're not required to be in the class. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to start writing some questions for my counselor now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to talk to them today, so. Perfect. I thank you, though, for all your help. Of course. All right. So, um, any other questions? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this um, test prep study questions. So it's approximately five pages long. All right, each section is broken down into pretty much, um, it's not broken down by chapter, but it is pretty much, you know, the, the main core of this exam is primarily focused on the three top sections that you deal with. So on your homepage, right, the three sections that I'm talking about is your vendors, your customers, and your employees. That is guaranteed because the most important thing about a vendor is you need to enter a bill, okay? The most important thing about your customers is that you have sales. And the most important thing about your employees is you have to pay them, okay? So um, this is primarily going to be most of the exam. Now, also a small section of the exam as well is going to be how you set up QuickBooks. How do you create a file how do you customize a file okay so those are going to be the primarily the big chunks of the book right the customers were split into two chapters right okay so um yes that's most of the exam however this is what you should know um at least um you know a rough kind of um area that you should know the ins and outs to. So especially with all the different ways of transactions. Okay, so the first question here is um, what information is required um, before um, they set up a QuickBooks file? So if you guys remember on the um, chapter 12, okay, there is that 12 step, um, 12 steps uh, page on how to set up your company file. That is what this is referring to, that you should know what those 12 steps are uh, because it's important on how to create your company file. You need to get all the details. You need to run a, you need to run a previous trial balance if you are um, continuing on a company. Um, but if you are creating a company from scratch, then you probably won't need steps I think 8 through 12 or something like that. You need to know how to set up your accounts. You need to know how to um, to set your preferences. Okay? So I don't know what the page is, but um, it's, it's in Chapter 12. Um, it's like a couple pages um, after uh, the very first page, um, and it gives you 346. Good job. Thank you. And this page is going to give you the 12 steps on how to set up your company file. So that's definitely something I want you to go ahead and um, utilize to answer. Okay. How to start a new company data file in QuickBooks. Okay. So we talked about this. There are two ways that we can create a company file. What are they? Good. Express start and detailed. Okay. Okay. Also known as the easy step interview. So the book can interchange that. Or the test can interchange that. Now, wh who can use the express start? What is the express start?
Experienced QuickBook users? Correct. Experienced QuickBook users. Okay. And um, do you guys remember how it works? Like when you use the Express Start, what do you know? What do you do? So when you create the company file, go ahead. Okay. So for the Express Start, since it is for experienced QuickBooks users, right? One thing that you're going to notice is that all you're doing is you're just setting up the the basic computer, uh, the basic uh, company um, profile. You use the company name, the address, what kind of comp, what the company is, um, like whether it's a LLC, uh, a corporation, a sole pr pr proprietor, right? And once you just enter that uh, that information, it creates the company file right away. So therefore. You, because for um, experienced users, you have to set, set up all company preferences manually, okay? Whereas the Express Start or the Easy Step Interview, right, you go through pretty much a series of questions, okay? that help you create your company file, but it, at the same time, it helps you also, um, it also helps you uh, set the company preferences as you go through the questions. Okay, so um, easy step interview uh, is for beginner. Users of QuickBooks, so I'm gonna do quick QB for short. All right, answers, seer, answer, series. To help set up company preferences. Okay, so that's the, the difference between the two. So once again, express start and detailed start. You need to know the two different ways to create a company file and what the difference between them are, okay? So then the next one says how to keep the lists and um, preferences from an old file, okay, while um, removing all of the old transactions. So do you guys remember this? This was from yesterday. How do we how do we keep all the lists and all the items, right? Um, and preferences. But you're deleting all the old transactions. Condense. Correct. Data. Correct. So in this case, um, condensing the data file. So from here, do you guys remember how to get to get there? How do you navigate to get to that condensed file? That could be a navigation question. So do you remember how to perform the condensed data file. Company. Not company. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you did went to uh, file. File. And then you go down to 
utilities, okay. And then, okay, the range and then the Correct. Okay. Sorry, my grandson was crying. I had to mute him. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. It's okay. So once again, it's going to be file on the menu bar. All right. Then it's going to be utilities. And then it's going to be condense data. Right. All right, good. Next question says, how to customize the home page? There are two ways to customize the home page. So customizing the home page basically says how do you how do you have the icons appear on the home page? You get a favorite? Not favorites. Yeah. How do you customize you edit preferences? Edit preferences excellent so for example right you see this little inventory section right here if you go to inventory and items okay and you click on company right you can if you activate it right and I click okay I click okay and the next time I see my home page there it is I got rid of my my um, purchase section or my inventory section so that is one way that is the um yes that is definitely one way that you can um customize the home page so edit menu bar um preferences and company. Okay. And then I'll I'll go ahead and give you this one cuz um so if you are the using um the easy step interview Essentially, the questions, questions that you answer also set up the home page. Okay. Now, that's only if you've experienced QuickBooks long enough to know that, okay, well, if I don't want to use the e Express Start, because then I would have to manually create my home page. I know for a fact if I go through the easy step interview and I say, yes, I do have inventory, that's customizing your home page. Yes, I do have sales tax, so then you have the sales tax icon. Yes, I do customer statements, then you have the statements icon. Okay. So that's one that um, will be hidden. So the primary one is going to be the edit uh, menu pr preferences. Next question says, how to set up lists, okay? So your customers, your vendors, your items, et cetera, okay? That includes understanding which names um, and items should, be, should appear on which list. So let's talk about the very first one. So your custom, your vendors slash customers slash employees. Who belongs on there? Anybody that fits as a vendor, customer, and employee. Wait, let's talk about how. How do you create these lists? Okay. Get a customized matrix. 
Okay, so let's talk about the how. How do you create your vendors, customers, or employees list? Separate now, you go to vendors first. Mm hmm. Vendors where? And, uh, let's see, Aiden. Let's know. Uh, it should be on the menu bar. Menu bar? And, yeah. Menu so bar. Lists as item list. Okay, that's just those, that's just for those lists. I'm talking about the people. How do you enter those people in? Customers and go to new. Customers, is so the there? Customer center, the vendor center. Yeah. The centers, correct. You need to go to their centers in order for you to populate the list for you to be able to create them. So that's what I was trying to get at is how um, you need you need to go to each center to create your list okay and then each each section will i will ask you how to create one um okay what about your items list what does your items list even do your items is the ones like uh like durations like yeah mm, insurance Items list. Insurance is not going to be on. No. What would you typically see when you see the items list? Inventory. Inventory. Good. What else do you see? Inventory. Yes. So what... The item list does is it breaks down the sales process. So it records any sales. So that means if you provide a service, if you sell a product, if you charge tax, if you charge um, you know, shipping and handling fees, Right? Do you, if you charge a finance charge, if you want to sell a group of items, if you want to create an item or create a product, right? Assembly is going to be where you create the uh, product from using multiple um, inventory items, right? Group is where you want to sell bundle packages, right? So anything that has to do with the sales process itself. So anything that helps you record a sale, okay? Um, and again, how do we create them? We'll talk about that um, in one of the other sections, how to create your items. Okay. What about the chart of accounts? What does the chart of accounts do? That's where it's the register and the banking. Good. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's one example of a chart of account. Okay. Okay. So, if you guys remember from way back when, your chart of the counts needs to exist first. You need to create this list first before you could do any transaction in QuickBooks. Because the idea here is, when you do a transaction, you need to link each account that is associated to that transaction. So for example, right? I sell something, right? I need to have a sales account to record my revenues. And I also need a banking account to link the cash I'm going to be receiving. Okay? So you need to set up the chart of accounts prior before setting, before um, even being able to do anything in QuickBooks. So chart of accounts, okay, is going to be um, 
how, uh, so you're going to create the chart of accounts to link your transactions, okay? And how are they listed? Um, so again, you have your assets, liabilities, so we do li 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 liabilities for short, equity, revenues, or in this case, they use income. and expenses okay so once again we i think there's another section where it can ask you how to create it but you need to be able to create this first because it helps you link your transactions together and what the uh, and what does and the um items they in order to create items you need to link them to those accounts so you need to have the accounts before you can create your items Okay, those are a few examples, so make sure that you exhaust every single one um, on here, okay? There's a lot of lists that you could take a look at. If you just go to lists, then you could just tell me which one um, is each one belong to. Now, of course, the list itself, right? We um, talked briefly about some of them. Now, obviously, the more important ones are going to be your items list, things that we learned through this uh, through this entire certification or through this book, right? The last three weeks that we learned, what did we learn from each um, list that we encountered, okay? So that's that section there, okay? Um, okay, so each one that when I um, have it in bold, it's just an approximate. It may not be as accurate, but what I'm trying to say is this is usually typically like, what you would normally see, most questions would appear from each section. So here we're looking at um, QuickBooks utilities and general product information. So again, this could be revolving chapter one, okay, as well as chapter seven, okay? So the question here is how to navigate or move around QuickBooks. So let's talk about it. You have you have three ways to enter in a transaction. What are they? You have three ways to enter in a transaction. Or, or yes. Three ways to enter in a transaction. What are they? What do you call this one right here? Home page. Home page. What do you call this up here? And what do you call this right here? Item. Good. So those are the three ways you could enter in a transaction, okay? using the interface. So here is through the home page. Okay. You have the menu bar and you have the icon bar. Now the question is how to navigate around the QuickBooks using those uh, things. So like I said, the home page, we already know what it is. It gives you a graphic depiction of a trans of a flow of the transaction. So this one's pretty straightforward, right? Your transactions, you just click on them because they have icons, okay? Your menu bar, right? It's gonna give you a list of all the transactions that you can do um, in regards to, if in this case, if it's an employee, right? Those are the uh, transactions you could do with employee. If it's a vendor, oh no, vendor, 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 vendor. If this is your customer, if it's a vendor, that's all you could do because right now I took out the um, uh, the inventory. So that's all you can do for vendors. Here are your employees, right? So each section that you navigate through using the menu bar is pretty much going to be almost every transaction that, you can, that exists in QuickBooks. Okay. And once again, the icon bar. What does the icon bar do? Can I enter, can I actually go to a transaction using the icon bar? 
Will it, can I enter a bill through the tri through the icon bar? No. Bitch, bitch, no. No. It. Where, where does it take you to? You can track a bill. Okay. But you can't. Yeah, but you can't enter one. You, you can't enter in like you would enter here on the home page. Right. Yeah. However, what does the icon bar hold? What, what when I when I click on the bill tracker, where does that take me? Correct. So if I were to click customers, where does it take me? Your customer list. Your customer center. Yeah. Correct. So these are just shortcuts to take you to an area that you're able to perform your transaction. So that's what the icon bar is. You can customize it. So if you want the income tracker, right, you, it doesn't take you to the actual transaction, but it takes you to the center. Right? Same thing with reports, right? You can't create the report there, but you can, it will take you to the report center. So the icon bar, it just takes, it's a shortcut that takes you to a center. Okay. So the home page, right? We talked, we talked about that. It's a graphic, um, graphic depiction of a flow of a transaction and you could click on the icons and we will enter a transaction okay menu bar gives you a list of all the transactions okay and then of course the icon bar basically takes takes you, uh, it, wait, an icon bar is a shortcut that takes you to a center to uh, perform a transaction, okay? Make sure you know how to use it to navigate through it. So we talked about that home page. It's pretty straightforward. You look, you locate the flow transaction, find the icon, enter it in. The menu bar gives you a list. Okay. All right. How to back up and restore a data file. So let's talk about how to back up. We talked about this yesterday too. How do you back up a company file? Menu bar company, no. File. Backup company, okay. Now, what does creating a backup company file do? Okay, say, so Nathan, can you repeat that last part? You can, uh, you can back up all your transactions on your local drive. Uh-huh. Good. So, um, so file menu bar, back up company. Okay. Um, how do you restore a backup comp file? How do you restore a backup? Click in the file on the menu bar and then open or restore company. Perfect. Open or restore company. And then you're going to click up the backup. Okay. I can't do that because I already have one open. So I have to close that in order to do that. Okay. So good.
Okay, so good. So we talked about what a backup file does, right? It gives, it's basically, you know, saves a copy of your company file with all the existing transactions. And for in case, if your file becomes corrupted, too many people are using it at once, it crashes. Yet at least you have a file that saved all the transactions as much as you can, right? Up to the point where you stopped saving it. So the great thing about that is that when, if in case your company file does crash, right? You'd be able to see the transaction that you previously saved instead of having to start from all from ground zero and have to enter it from scratch. So in this case, it helps your company, right? In case for any emergencies where um, you end up crashing your file, right? And at least instead of doing everything from scratch, you have some of the data retaining in there, okay? How to determine the release number and how to update QuickBooks. So let's talk about the first one, release number. Let's talk about what is a release number. What is a release number? Okay, so if you guys, this is chapter one stuff. What a release number does is, it is a way that QuickBooks can update itself with um, a patch. So we, uh, this, is, this is kind of technical terms as well. Um, when Avid users of QuickBooks, right, find an issue or something wrong with the program, right? There's a bug on the program, like a transaction won't go through. Then they report it to the um, the Blackboard, right, or some kind of um, board to let the company know that there's a bug in QuickBooks, okay? And by... And what the company does is they create a patch, which they name it as a release. So the release is basically a patch for the QuickBooks to go ahead and um, basically fix itself, right? Fix the issue, fix the problem, okay? So I'm going to write here, when um, QuickBooks has an issue or... A bug a release number is a patch that you download to fix the issue okay now let's talk about where can you see this release number how do you see this release number? Where can you find it? There's only one key I taught you in this entire program. F2, correct. F2, so it should be above your number, your number keys at the very top of your keyboard. If you hit that F2, here you go. For me, QuickBooks, I've never updated it, so I am still on release number one, okay? At the very top of the window, it gives you your program, and it tells you that you're at R1, okay? That means I only am still on the very, very, very first edition of its um, release. Now, how do I know how many there are? There's 22 of them, <laughs> okay? So I haven't, I haven't updated, and like I said, as far as teaching um, this certificate, so this using QuickBooks, 
I've never needed an issue. I never had an issue with QuickBooks, so I never needed to update it. I could still teach without the patches, okay? But there's 22 of them, and I'm still on one out of 22. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in there. How uh, to see your release number. F. F2 key. Okay. How do you update your QuickBooks? How do you update your QuickBooks? Under help on the menu. Correct. Bar. Good. So if I go ahead and go ahead and click this one and I go to the help on the menu bar. Now, make sure you know the difference between updating and upgrading. OK, upgrading is when you're trying to move from one program to another. Updating your QuickBooks is going to, um, you know, update the releases, get you all the patches that you need. So you need to know the difference between upgrade and update. Update is going to update your software with the latest patches, okay? So make sure you know, you know the difference, okay? So yes, update your QuickBooks is going to be on the file menu bar. I'm sorry, help menu bar. All right, this question asks how to use QuickBooks in single user and multi-user mode. Okay. How do you switch user modes? File what? Under file on the menu bar. File on the menu bar, switch users. Okay, good. Now, what's the difference between the two? What's the difference between being a single user mode and multi user mode? Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> when I talk, when I switch to multi uh, multi user modes, what does that mean? Correct. When you have, when you set up a bunch of users, right, and you um, allow everyone to use the file and enter their transactions at one time. Good. So single, right? can access the com the file at one at one time. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. So next question asks is what editions of QuickBooks are available and how do you find out which one that you are using? Okay, so let's answer the first one. What are the different QuickBooks edition that are available? Is it Premier Pro? Correct, Pro, Premier. Desktop is going to be one of those two. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Was it elite? Not elite. What was that, Nilo? Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. Good. What else? Accountant. Accountant. Yes, that's the one that your book is going to allow you to download the five month trial for. And lastly, what's the last edition? If there's a desktop version, what's the other version? Online. Online. Good. Okay, so, Dan, um, desktop is going to be your pro enterprise premiere and your accountant. Okay, so make sure that you know that, that these are your desktop versions. Okay. Gotcha. And then the, the online version doesn't have a pro premiere enterprise accountant? Or? No. They have, it's online. online well. Yes. It's but, online. and then the online version is going to be broken down in, in subscriptions. Okay, so you can have essentials, you can have advanced, you can have all of that. But those are those are uh, basically built upon how much memory and how much space you need on the internet. Okay, so uh, but yes, there for the desktop versions, no, they they the online version doesn't have an online version for Pro, an online version for Premiere. No, they are a separate subscription plan on themselves. So. If you want to know where you can get that, just go to um, either intuit.com slash QuickBooks, or I think you can actually go to QuickBooks.com. It links it to the same exact place. Okay. So, yes, um, these are the desktop versions, and that's the exact. Okay. So, how do we see, how do we know which version we're using? Say that again. Depending on what position, that's the user. It tells you at the top of the screen. Of what? Of what? Because at the very top of my menu bar right now, or my screen right now, it tells me what file I'm in. But it also tells you the version of QuickBooks you're using. Does it really? On the top? So let's say QuickBooks Stock Pro 2019. Yeah. Oh, straight wow. Up. Straight up. It does tell you that. But anyways, it is the F2 key. It will tell you the exact model, the exact license number. But yeah, okay. It's supposed to only say what file you're in. But that's, yes, good one. Good observation. Because also, too, when you're also on your desktop, this is a really funny question because when you're on your desktop, before you even select the icon, it tells you right here what it is. So that's a weird question, but um, the general idea here is for you to be able to know to use your function key. Well, that's okay. A lot of those questions are kind of tricky, so we'll take an easy one. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. How to see which one that you're using, the F2 function key, um, or at top of um, the... Title bar. Okay, so also it's the it's the blue 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 bar. I cannot type today. Blue bar. Okay. Good. All right. Here's another question: How to password protect your QuickBooks? We talked about this. So how do you password protect your book? Okay, so we know why it's important to password protect your books, but do you guys remember how to set it up? I can give you the first one. Okay, when you go through the easy step interview, right? 
So this is what this one isn't as obvious. Easy step interview. You can set your um you can set your password. Okay. Now what if I skip that? That's the question that this is asking. How do I password protect my company file after I've gone through the easy step interview? Correct. Under company on the menu bar. Okay. Set up users and passwords. Yes. If you click on this, you could set up your um, users. You can change your password right there. Okay. This one. Okay. So company menu bar. Last but not least, how and why to use preferences. Okay. Let's talk about how, let's talk about why first. Why do you need to use preferences? And then we'll talk about the how. Why do you need to use preferences? This one isn't a difficult question to answer. It could be kind of obvious. Easy to quick access? Correct. Easy, um, easy to access or quicker to access because if you're putting your own preferences on there, you know where everything is. So again, quicker to access. Yes, if you create the home page the way that you want to create it, you're going to have much more easier to access. If you don't need all this clutter, get rid of it. Okay. So yes, it's easy to access and quicker to access, um, or it could be easy um, to enter a transaction. Okay. Now, how do we set these preferences. On the footer screen. On the what? I can't, I, um, Nathan, I can't really hear if you're answering the question or not. Okay. <laughs> you were, if, if you said edit, you were correct. Yeah, you go from edit to contact. Correct. Right. So if you do this, right, you have two choices. You could either do my preference, which is user preferences, or you can modify the company's preferences. So make sure that you know that. Okay. So how is going to be on the edit menu bar. And we're going to add, um, you have preferences. Okay, good. Okay. Lists management. Okay, 6% of the exam, so approximately three questions. Okay, so here is going to say how to manage your list, customers, vendors, items, and et cetera. List management. Okay, so um, being able to add an account, delete, edit, and merge. So let's talk about it. How do you add? Okay, we could, okay, so so in this case, the chart of accounts, the items list, the customer's list, the, the vendor's list, okay, maybe not the customer's vendors. Uh, so let me, let me separate that. So people, okay, if you're doing people, how do you add people to their list? 
Mm -hmm. You would go to the centers. Mm -hmm. And then you look for me. Mm -hmm. and which is at the top of the window. Yeah, on top or on the bottom when you open the, the customer. Okay, so they, for this one, you don't have a bottom section. Well, right here in Manage Transactions, the admin. No. So for cause for people, your only way to enter it in is either at the very top of the window where it says new customer slash job, or what's the quickest way? Uh, right click. Right click anywhere. Okay. So good. I'm gonna enter here uh, for people. So you have to go to their centers, um, and then you click. Uh, uh, what is it? Top. Top um, of the center, you have the new, or right click. Okay, what if, and then so now items will include your chart of accounts, your items, your, your uh, payroll items, any of that, okay? How do you enter something new? So this one's going to be standard for most of them because they all look similar. How do you enter a new item? You can do it from the menu bar. Menu bar? For which items. one? Okay, for I okay, item. Okay, so I'm on list and item list right now. Or you can go to the either. Customers or vendors to item list. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, what's the quickest one? Right click. Right click anywhere. So, right click is going to be one of your best friends here. Okay. Items. Okay, so bottom window. Select new. <coughs> Excuse me. Same thing. What about what about deleting transactions or anything like that? You're not supposed to delete unless you have not used them before. Correct. So here, but let's say you you've never used that account before, then you can delete. So yes. delete only. If item slash or item has never been used, okay? Never delete if item has been used. But what can you do? What are the options that you can do if an item has been used and you can't delete it? There's two things that you can do. You can inactivate it. Correct. Inactivate. Or you can... Um, oh, wait. I think that's the only one. Sorry. I was thinking of something else. All right. So once again, you only delete if you've never used it before. And how you delete it is the same exact way. You can right-click and delete it. Okay. Um, other ways that you can delete something, so if it's for people, you could just right click and delete them. Okay, so here for deleting is going to be right clicking. Okay, or if you're in the items, you can just go down to the very bottom and you'd be able to select delete. Okay, so therefore you can edit it as well, right? Uh, for most cases, when you go to your vendors or your people, so I'm going to go ahead and say right here, people. I guess you could do it for all of it. Just double click on it. Double click on entry to edit info. Now that only applies to everything except for the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts will take you to a register. Okay. Chart 
of accounts will take you to a register. So in order to edit a uh, item on the chart of accounts, you would have to right click or go down to the bottom. Okay. But for most cases, right, if I'm in my customer, right, or my items, if I double click on it, I can edit it right there. Okay, so that's most cases, right? A lot of the times, right, you have the little pencil icon. Um, so if I go to my, so here's my customer, I have the little pencil icon that you can edit the information with. But then again, I can also double click on them and I can go ahead and edit their information right then and there. Okay, so that's for most trend, most people in items here. The only one that you can't do is the chart of accounts because that will take you to another place. Okay. What about merging items? So once again, you can merge people if they're the same person, okay? You can merge items, you can merge accounts. So how do you merge them? Okay, but so this is, this is, but this one, more commonly you would use merging for chart of accounts, okay? So how do you merge an account? What's the rule that you have to do? Correct. That's okay. Good. So, um, select the account you do not want. Okay. Um, and edit the info to appear to look like the account that you do want okay. the um a message will pop up to say that this uh, this account already exists would you like to merge? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Any questions in that section? Well, I mean, we answered the question, so we'll... that's pretty good. Okay. I got a question. Go for it. Uh, can you go on an example for merging? For merging? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So if I were to go to my chart of accounts, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create another expense account. Okay, uh, let me let me pick one first. So I have to. Oh, I can only merge things that don't that are not main accounts. So let me see. Okay, so equipment rental. Okay, uh, let me see. Equipment rental is six to six hundred. So. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go here. Well, I'm gonna create the account first before I do anything. Okay, so expense account. Okay, click continue. And let's say you have equipment rental and let's say you have venue rental. I don't know, I'm gonna make this up, okay? Venue rental, okay? Okay, so I could do venue and equipment. Vendor, rental, and equipment. Okay. And I'm just gonna make six, five, one, two, zero. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Okay, so here I have rental, uh, the venue and uh, ven venue rental and equipment. And here I have equipment uh, rental. Where is it? Right here. Nope, nope, nope. Well, let me look for it. So equipment rental, here it is, okay? Let's say I wanna combine my uh, equipment rental to my venue rental and equipment. So I want to make it look like this. So I have to look at it. 
So it's 65120, and I want it to look exactly like this. Venue, rental, and equipment. Okay, I wanted to make it look exactly like this. So I'm going to go to my um, equipment rental, and I'm going to go ahead and edit the one that I do not want. And when I do that, I'm going to change it to look exactly like it. Venue, rental, and equipment. Okay. And I don't need to change the description. I just need to change the, 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 the name of the account. And because I'm using account numbers, I also have to make that relationship as well. So this, I did 65120, right? Once I do that, here you go. This account is already existing or already being used, okay? Would you like to merge this item? I click yes. So there I have it. My equipment, right, rental has disappeared. It is now together with my venue and rental and equipment, okay? So that's an example of how you can do that, all right? All right. Okay. So there you go. Now, one rule here that you need to know too, that you can't just merge any two accounts. They have to be the same account type, okay? So um, that could be something that you can add in here um, as a rule on merging your accounts, okay? Good, any other questions? Okay, I guess I can't move that, all right. Okay, so here we're on the next section here. How QuickBooks uses items to perform the necessary accounting behind the scenes? So once again, right, how does it use it, right? So in this case, what do we know? What do the transactions do? If I'm entering a bill, how does that, how does QuickBooks use entering a bill to perform the accounting behind the scenes? transactions for you like if you make a payment it, in uh, it'll increase it or uh, on the if you're gonna deposit it'll I mean it does everything for you pretty much correct so in this case so the bill um, so in this case this is um, an accounting question okay so when you do a bill payment right what you essentially does in the background is that it increases it doesn't increase decreases. it decreases good yeah. good it decreases accounts payable and your checking account because you're making a payment therefore you're getting rid of the money that you have so you're decreasing your checking account and you're also decreasing what you owe but when I'm entering in a bill right I am increasing sales because in order, I'm sorry, increasing expenses, okay, because usually bills are cor directly correlated to expenses, um, and increasing and increasing accounts payable because now I owe, which is a liability, okay, so in this case, um, Yes, yeah, so in this case, when I do a bill payment, I'm decreasing my liability and I'm decreasing my assets because I'm using um, the accounts payable is what I owe to other people and my checking account is my asset. Okay, so these are good examples here. So make sure that you understand the flow of every single transaction. So um, not just only this, right? What happens when I do sales? What happens when I pay my employees, et cetera, et cetera. So here are a few examples of how 
QuickBooks uses items to perform the um, uh, necessary accounting behind the scenes is this example right here. So in this case, um, this one is definitely going to be using your accounting model. Okay, if you guys remember in chapter one, right, you'll see that um, that graphic depiction of the arrows going up and down per, for each scenario for each um, type of account. So the accounting model, all right, so chapter, chapter one. Okay, am I understanding how a transaction increase slash decreases an account type? Okay, good. All right. Question here is the difference between the different types of items and when to use each type. So this is page seven. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. This is uh, chapter seven. Uh, that one page of the list of all the items. Um, chapter seven. Okay. List of all 10 items you can create, okay? So um, I don't know what page that is, but it's definitely that list, that list of the 10 items that you can create when you're creating lists. Make sure you know each and every single one of them and what their functionality is. So again, an example would be, when do you use a service item? Or yeah, when do you use a service item? When do you use a sales tax item? Okay. When do you use a inventory item versus a not, uh, or, oh, sorry, inventory part versus a non-inventory part? What's the difference between the two? Okay. So um, make sure you take a look at that and understand each one. I did do an example of every single one, but your book pretty much gives you a nice description of each one and how to use it and when to use it. Okay. Then it says how to use items for different types of scenarios. These it can include um, companies, okay, um, themselves. Okay, so here... Uh, products for special prices. Once again, these are just examples, okay, um, that you can use this, right? So when would you use an item for a product for a special price? What item would you use? Not, mm. okay, so. The, like if you bring products together to, to make an order for a special, like a customer if they ask you for this is special item. Okay, what do we call that? So take a look at your items, okay. So here, I lost my chart of accounts. Come on, items and services. Okay, if I create a new item, Right here gives me the list of the 10 items I can do. I only have pro, so I don't have assembly, but which one would you use? Group. Correct. Okay, so group, okay, item, right? Could use for bundle. All right, what about deleting entries? So in this case, deleting entries, or in this case, right, to write off bad debt, or to cancel, to cancel an order, right? 
How would you use this? What kind of item would you use? We learned about this in chapter three. Um, Did you have to create an account first? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You could write up the product into that account. Mm, you wouldn't write the product into that account. I mean, the, whatever is the best, the, the, what they owe you. Okay, so there was a specific item that I created in order to have that. Now, I had to create a bad debt item, okay? Do you remember which type I used to create that bad debt item? So here are the options. Other charge? Other charge, excellent. Yes. Okay, other charges, okay? Again, what about services for a special price, right? What kind of item would you use? That's a pretty straightforward one, the service item. Okay. What about unique products or services that have different prices for each sale? So in this case, um, that could be relative, okay? For one service or product, once again, these are pretty relative. So to, in order to do you a unique product or services that have different or, um, that have different sales price, right? You just create a regular item, right? And you just select to choose no price level. Other ones would be for the second for the second one, either one product or one service, and you do a product uh, inventory part, non-inventory part, or a service. So once again, those are pretty relative. Okay. And uh, I think it's good right now to go ahead and take a nice 15-minute break because um, we have a lot of questions to answer. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. We'll take a nice 15-minute break. And let me see, it is uh, 10.07, so I'm going to do 10.08. So 15 minutes from now, 10.23 is when I expect you guys to come back, okay?